We're here today, right in the heart of central London, to look at a real hidden gem, a house we've recently illuminated some fine works from Titian, Bruegel and Van Dyck. A landmark arch, a famous house, as Lloyd Grayson would say, who lives in a house like this? So here we are at Axley House, known as number one London, the most famous uh, address in London. Uh, many people have seen it from the outside as they go around Hyde Park Corner, but very few have visited the inside and its treasures. And this is the main entrance hall, or the public entrance. It's a room that uh, starts your tour of the house. Uh, it's a very important room, and this is where we started our relationship with Apsley House, and this is one of the first rooms that we live. So the house is uh, run by English Heritage on the public side, but it's also still used by the Duke of Wellington. He, he, he uh, resides in part of the house. So Josephine, we're in the Waterloo Gallery here. Can you tell us a little bit about the collection at Apsley House? Yeah, so the collection is all provenance to the first Duke of Wellington. He bought the house in 1817 and then throughout the 1820s he remodelled the house and finishing with this grand Waterloo Gallery in 1828. The pictures consist of sort of three separate sort of collections for ease, pictures that he bought and commissioned himself, pictures that he bought in auctions in France after Waterloo and then the big bulk of the part of the most important part of the collection are the Spanish pictures. These pictures come from the Spanish Royal Collection. They were rescued from the battlefield um, in 1813 at the Battle of Vitoria in northern Spain. Um, and after um, this battle was over, the King of Spain, Ferdinand VII, granted the pictures to Wellington. So in the private, in the public part of the house, we have 82 paintings that are part of the Spanish Royal Collection. So that's why we have such an amazing collection of uh, paintings by Velázquez, uh, Murillo, uh, Rivera, uh, Bruegels, Rubens and Titian. And uh, really the collection is one of the most outstanding in any house in London. One of the big impacts for the visitors, the thing that we've noticed when the visitors are coming round the house now and the paintings are lit, people really linger in front of paintings because they can see them, they can enjoy them and we first felt that with the Piccadilly room when we lit all the pictures in there. We found that the dwell time in that room increased because people were really enjoying looking at the paintings and one of the things that has been a complete revelation to us is the way that we're looking at the paintings in a different way. We see colours, we see details that we never saw before. So if we're seeing them, and all the staff here are really familiar with the collection, if we're seeing them then you can imagine the joy that that's bringing to the visitor. Entrance Hall is, is as Harry said, one of the first spaces that we looked at at Apsley House. When you come into a space for the first time, you need it to be warm and inviting and welcoming. And when we first arrived here, uh, it was lit um, solely by lanterns. And it had a slightly cold feel to the space. And the space had no definition or any focal point. So I feel that this is a real uh, transformation in the collection. So Josephine, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you've experienced during the lighting installation? Well, I suppose the biggest challenge is getting everybody to work together, so the logistics. So having electricians on site, picture handlers, conservators, and then the TM lighting technicians. So there's lots of different teams trying to work in the same space at the same time. The big thing that we found as well is getting the whole tone of the room right. So making sure that all the lights are kind of talking to one another so that the, the tone in the room is correct. So, so it's, it's the a, balance that, of light. Yeah, it's yeah. A big, that's a big challenge as well. But I would say the biggest challenge for us on site is the logistics. So what do you think the big challenge is from your side coming into this house? So I'd say the, in any historic house, uh, one of the, the big challenges is getting power to where you need it. We were rather fortunate in this house that we had these wonderful picture rails everywhere and it's a great way to hide the cables behind them and then we can run the cables down the chains. 
It's very discreet. If you look around the space, you will probably not see any cables at all. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a, a testament to itself. It looks, uh, looks really fantastic. So um, one of the massive advantages uh, for the visitor to the house, so after all that's why we're here, uh, so that the visitors can come and see the collection and enjoy the collection, and one of the big problems was that there were many paintings in this house that we just couldn't see, um, you know, because we have this classical tiered hang. Even pictures at the bottom were invisible, so pictures at the top of the tier were really impossible for visitors to see, and I think that the outcome now is that not only does it make the whole room sing with light, but I think that people can really appreciate all the artworks. And the thing about Apsley House is it has so many gems in the collection, and some of them were small um, or you know not hanging correctly, uh, you know too high, and people just missed so much. But now, because they're all individually lit, every painting comes into its own, which is you know, the biggest advantage for every visitor, really. So there were also some uh, lighting challenges as yeah. well. And one of them was the picture of the Waterloo banquet. Mm. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and it's a, it's a massive painting in width, and it has this very ornate frame over the top. And sticking a conventional picture light over the top of that is quite a, it would look odd and it would interrupt the, the flow of the, of, of the frame. I mean the frame is, is as significant as the, as, the, as the artwork. And so we decided that we would uplight it. As a result, you don't even read the light in the space, uh, but more importantly, it's, it, it uplights the ceiling as well, which adds another layer of light to the room. Uh, it's got this uh, very delicate gold ceiling within the room, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, it just enhanced that just uh, just enough to um, to really lift lift the room. I think it was a it was a it was a good result. In this important light study by De Hooch of a musical party, when we first came to Apsley House, this is this is how the artwork was lit. Uh, originally just with a central chandelier. You, you can't really see the, the contrast in the colour, you can't see the vibrancy, and really more importantly, you can't see the study of light that De Hooch was really trying to capture in this piece. Um, and now when we turn the lights on, um, and where we lit it with uh, pitch lights, here you can quite clearly see the light flooding in the window, the delicacy of the folds in the fabric and you can start to see the light glancing off the faces of the characters in the foreground of the work. Traditionally with picture lighting the main problem is you typically highlight only the top of the canvas and a little bit of the frame. Now what we've managed to capture here with the technology that is uh, within our own picture lights is we're able to light from top to bottom of the canvas and the full width of the frame. Most importantly in this piece we're trying to capture the study of light and really the study of light fills this entire canvas and really and more importantly again we're capturing the colour uh, using a very high colour rendition LED to capture the vibrancy of colour and really pick out the reds and golds within this, uh, within this piece. So when we're talking about colour rendition what we're really talking about is exhibiting all the colours within the rainbow and when you shine all the colours of light onto a painting you really start to pick out the vibrancy. And really what that means is in a, in a painting like this, the browns, the oranges, the reds, the warmth, the gold within the frame, when you're able to exhibit a high color rendition, which is as close to 100% of the color spectrum as possible, what you're really starting to do is see all the color, and then you start to see the depth and the detail within the picture. And really that's what this picture light is enabling within this artwork and that's why we get so much vibrancy and so much attention to this work, especially as it's a study of colour as well, as well as light. We start to really pick out uh, the, the grandeur of this piece. So lighting um, Canova's massive statue of Napoleon in, at the bottom of our staircase was also a big challenge. It's not in an ideal place for such a massive statue, so any kind of lighting poses problems and it was quite challenging with shadow and getting the exact position of the light. Um, but now that it's um, combined as well with the soft lighting of the picture lighting around it, it, it's beautifully lit and 
it's not that anyone's going to overlook that statue because you just couldn't. Um, but now that you can actually see it, you know, you can see the the modelling on it. You know, it really brings out the beauty of Canova's work.